<laughs> All right, tornado warning. It now includes, does it include Huntsville Metro area? It, cl- it includes Lawrence Limestone, right. Madison, Morgan. If you're listening back. And that is my emergency alert going off. All right. There's my I'm going to switch this back to prod one, Brad. All right, wait till we go on air. Okay. I'm going to get yeah, this. Yeah, look at the off. back edge of that. Yeah. Clicker. Are you guys in back monitoring us at all? Let me go double check. Okay. I'm going to get the router up. Thanks. We Again, we do have a new tornado in. warning. If Thanks. any of y'all are watching on our <clears> stream, <throat> we are about to break into programming. A tornado warning is for Lawrence, Limestone, Madison, Morgan counties until 1015. Again, 1015. We are about to break into programming. Today is a 48 first alert weather day. A tornado warning now includes the Huntsville metro area, including Decatur. That storm we've been monitoring before we went off the air really started to spin and show signs of rotation, and it's moving into Trinity now. You need to seek shelter immediately for a possible significant tornado developing with this storm. The lightning has really been picking up as you go from Tanner on Highway 31 down to Decatur just to the west. This storm is moving into Greenbrier and Madison. Uh, it's going to be close to the Capshaw area. Area. Harvest right now, it looks like most of this may stay to your south, but it is also going to be moving in to the Huntsville metro area as, as we take a look at this line of thunderstorms. Again, very intense thunderstorm. One thing we've been concerned about is the fact that there's nothing to the south of it. So the wind blowing due south into this storm, there's a lot of wind shear still out there and it's riding along a boundary, and that's why it's moving a little bit more to the east. So you need to be thinking about where you're gonna seek shelter in the city of Huntsville towards the Marshall Space Flight Center down to Triana. I think if you're in Triana, unless this storm moves to the right, but it could continue due east, and if it does that, you're at a higher threat here from Triana. Uh, again, the Eastview Drive area here in Madison, Greenbrier, and Tanner. Let's get into the storm, and then it'll do a storm track for you. Uh, what we're watching is significant lightning here on the west side of Decatur. Chelsea, if you can get our Decatur camera up and pointed west and just monitor that, maybe have it in another screen for us. But boy, just tremendous lightning here from Tanner uh, to Decatur along Wheeler Lake. And as you get up to the north, let's see what the northern extent of this is. This is going to stay south of Athens, but your tornado sirens are probably sounding all across Limestone County. So with that said, uh, let me kind of reassure you, as we get into northern Limestone County up to Ardmore, very heavy rain, strong gusty wind, winds, but the most intense part of the storm is the one that's approaching Trinity and pretty much on uh, alternate 72 as you go west of Decatur and just west of the Beltline. In fact, Trinity, again, be in your shelter there in Trinity. Now let's take a look at the velocity data. Uh, This is what we're watching here. Yeah, storm relative velocity. Uh, really, sh- the, the entire storm is rotating, and I think we're kind of at the beginning stages here of the development of rotation within the thunderstorm. The concern is, and this I think this is a pre-worn out here, because the, the tail end of the storm, we don't have the strong rotation showing up yet, but that could happen at any moment. As you notice here, the back edge of the storm, let me draw this out for you, we've got a supercell thunderstorm here, and it's the back end here we're concerned concerned with uh, for the possible tornado. I think we have the precursor to a developing tornado here on the west side of Trinity. So I I don't think there's a tornado on the ground right now, but the trend is upward with this storm. And the fact that we've had what's called a lightning jump here, uh, just in the last five to 10 minutes, there's a tremendous amount of lightning within this storm. There's probably large hail developing with this storm. It may not be falling as of right now, but I gotta take the lightning off because there's so much lightning here. And let's let's take a look at the hail real quick, because if this does start producing hail, it's going to be fairly large, maybe up to golf ball size. Uh, This is the old, this is probably about five minutes late, but what I did just see there before I switched uh, was this area in pink here. This is just, um, it's going to be north of the the nuclear power plant here uh, on the north side of Wheeler Lake. This is moving towards Tanner. So this is the large hail. This is along Lindsay Road and uh, Laugh Miller Road, and this is going to be crossing into Tanner. So you're probably going to see maybe dime to nickel size hail, 
And if the storm intensifies, we're probably looking upwards at quarter to golf ball size hail. And this is going to track right down Huntsville, Huntsville Browns Ferry Road, uh, Mooresville Road area. And just over the last five years, this entire area has just exploded with development here along Mooresville Road. So a lot of subdivisions, a lot of homes out here. Again, potential for hail damage as this moves in. It's still about, I would say this is about probably six miles or so due west here of Highway 31, 5.7 miles there. Uh, the, hail sh uh, the hail core is going to be tracking to the east through, through Tanner, probably on the north side of Madison, out here towards uh, the Madison Huntsville Hospital there, uh, very close to Ch uh, Capshaw. So again, the new development out here as well. So a lot of impact here from this storm with the tornado warning on it. I'm going to take a look at the velocity and then I'm going to put a storm track on this. But you need to be seeking shelter in Trinity. Let me get street level here. Uh, here's the latest shear skit here, we call it. This, uh, it's indicating severe hail, about 90% chance that we've got hail at least three quarters of an inch. And the hail size here says uh, it's approaching two inches. So significant hail, but that hail is developing here as you get just southwest of Tanner. And this current storm track for the middle part of this storm that just disappeared. Again, takes that into the city of Madison, Greenbrier, out towards the, the Mazda Toyota plant, uh, the Polaris plant. Again, on the north side of Decatur here is where it looks like it's tracking. So let's get to the storm relative velocity again. It doesn't look all that organized, but there's still rotation going on there. And we're also seeing some circulation here near Athens. So your winds are probably picking up in Athens on the north side of this thunderstorm. So you're probably seeing some winds approaching, I would say probably approaching 50 miles per hour. So let's take another look at this here. So we've got, again, 54 miles per hour. It dropped to 38. That's because that wind has now shifted a bit to the east. So strong gusty winds in Athens. Uh, I don't think you're under that severe thunderstorm warning anymore. Yeah, that severe thunderstorm warning's expired. We're down to just the tornado warning that's just been issued here. So let's talk time of arrival. And I, I don't think there's a tornado yet right now. Let's take a look at debris signature here. Uh, we might. Let's take a look here closer. This is starting to get that green color here northwest of the uh, industrial park. So we'll have to watch that area there. So again, possible tornado continues probably on the north side of Decatur out towards the industrial park as you go across Wheeler Lake. This is going to be tracking to the north, just really just north of Prior Field with that circulation. And you don't want to get too caught up in the exact street level location with this because uh, you have broad circulation. So that tornado could be small. It could be anywhere within that, this area here that we're watching. So let me back out here and then we're going to put a storm track on here, put the radar on, and then we'll put the lightning back on as well. Uh, definitely concerned that down the road, this storm could drop a tornado. It's got a lot of lightning. You're, you're seeing that in Decatur, especially on the north side of Decatur. This is really getting bad here, uh, just south in the Tanner area, moving towards Greenbrier and Madison. You can hear it coming. So now, without further ado, let's storm track. I'm going to storm track the leading edge here of the lightning and the hail, because that's going because I don't want to to mislead anyone about the, the, at least the leading part of the storm moving in this fashion, about 42 miles per hour. So that puts it, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move this real quick here. I'm gonna move this, put it down here so it's, I'm not in the way of it. So Tanner, it's moving in now. This is the intense lightning. This is the hail that could be quarter inch size hail. So if you're down the road, you're worried about hail, uh, now's your time to do something about it. Um, Mill Creek Elementary area, just before 10 o'clock, the city of Madison, again, 954 on the, on the west side, on the east side, that is, a Hughes Road. Uh, Marshall Space Flight Center, 959, Grissom High School area around 1007, Huntsville right at 1007. Again, Huntsville's so large now that it's hard to just put one dot on it. The, the Madison location here is probably going to be good for the west side of Huntsville, and in some cases, Huntsville's on the west side of Madison, so uh, this is why you need to know where you live. Uh, again, Harvest, Monrovia, lightning's picking up there, and maybe you may get some winds around 45 to 50 miles per hour, but the intense lightning and the threat for the tornado is now on the northwest side 
side of Decatur. Ryland down the road at 1017, Maysville 1021, and Gurley around 1025. That's as this moves through the city of Huntsville. Still very heavy rain west in Cortland. Oh, I'm not liking what I'm seeing here. Uh, yeah, we've got a definite hook echo. So this is becoming more of a significant tornado threat on the northwest side of Decatur. Very large hail out here. This is along US Highway 31 on Loft Miller Road. I would say it's probably quarter size, maybe golf ball size hail with this. And that hail is going to be moving again towards Mooresville Road. Again, this is a dangerous situation. The inflection of my voice is going up. So that's kind of your heads up. When I go out and talk to the kids, when I talk to classrooms, I say, you're going to know when it becomes more intense or more severe by the inflection in our voice. So you need to be taking this very seriously. This is from Greenbrier. If you're out at the uh, Polaris plant, you need to be going to the shelter if you're not there already. Again, we're getting indication that we may have a tornado forming here out by the industrial park. This is right over the 3M area off Highway 20. If you're in Trinity, this is gonna be just off to your northeast here. And I'm gonna draw it just from the center of Trinity. The circulation is about three miles northeast of there. So what we're gonna watch from here, we're gonna to watch to see if this back edge wraps completely around. So this is gonna go over the Wheeler Lake area out towards the nuclear power plant. Again, this is a similar track to what we had uh, back in 2010. It's, again, it's a di completely different storm, but if you were impacted by that April 27th storm, this is a similar track here that's going to take it off to the east northeast. Uh, again, possible tornado developing on the back edge. That's what this hook right here indicates. I don't see a debris ball right now, but that would be the next step. So I'm concerned as I'm waiting, anticipating the next radar scan here. So here's that latest update, Mill Creek Elementary around 10 o'clock, Madison, 10 o'clock, of course, because Madison, uh, Mill Creek Elementary is there, and that's gonna be the Foxfield subdivision as well. So this track takes it right through Greenbrier, uh, the Palmer Park area in the city of Madison. Again, it's gonna be real close on the Mill Road area. Here's the latest scan coming in. You're going to get very large hail Greenbrier, East Limestone, south of, uh, uh, this is going to be, uh, in fact, this is going to go right over James Clemens High School uh, with this track here of the large hail. You're going to be, the, I believe, Horizon Elementary is out here as well. And then, of course, Liberty Middle School, uh, this is on the northern side of this. So Madison, prepare for very large hail. You need to get to your shelter. You need to uh, prepare for power outages, too, with this storm as it comes in. As I turn the lightning back on, you can just see this is a tremendous lightning producer. We're here in the middle of the night with significant lightning, a storm that's a supercell storm capable of putting down a tornado. So from now, uh, I'm gonna turn the lightning off. We're gonna turn uh, this off as well here, and we're gonna get in and do a little bit more analyzing uh, with this storm. The tornado warning is set to expire at 10:15, but that's not the concern right now. The concern is what's going on within this storm. We continue to see Tighter rotation developing just on the north side of Decatur. And I believe this is the Swan Creek. Um, it's going to be the Swan Creek Mobile Home Park out here. Uh, this area has been hit before uh, with tornadoes. Shear rate's probably increasing. Doesn't show it yet, but it will be on the next scan. So velocity. Velocity is getting a lot stronger here. So, again, we've got significant rotation here. Moving uh, on the south side of Tanner, you get here. Uh, just west of Greenbrier, you got Mooresville Road here. And uh, it's just to the north of, it's going to be just to the north of Pryor Field. Let me get some other bearings. You've got Highway 72. It looks like it's going to track very close uh, right down Huntsville Browns Ferry Road as well. Again, out by the uh, Mazda Toyota plant. And we've got the Buckies out here as well. Again, I think that is right here. I think this is Huntsville Browns Ferry Road right here. Let's see. Yeah, let's get the Decatur camera up again, just continuous lightning. You're probably going to go without power in parts of the city of Decatur, but we have significant circulation developing within this storm. So really, we're concerned anywhere, say, Lindsay Road 
all the way down into the industrial park here of Decatur, uh, just to the north of the causeway there, and everything moving northeast. So this is a, a serious situation. You need to be seeking shelter with this storm coming in. And you can see the latest uh, view there from our camera network. Very hard to see. I will say the camera is even lagging a bit because there's so many lightning strikes. Again, this is looking uh, due west. I mean, the camera is just getting poured with rain right now. Very, very heavy winds. Um, the only times that I've been able to see what's going on in the background, I've been trying to find any kind of a wall and funnel cloud. Essentially, it was due to lightning strikes lighting up the screen. Um, of course, we will keep you updated and keep a close eye to see if we can see any kind of a confirmed tornado. Again, this is going to be on the northwest side of Decatur heading north northeast. So just south of Tanner, but if you are in Tanner, I still would be in your safe place at this time as we could get some uh, damaging wind gusts just on the outskirts of this possible tornado. Um, again, we will keep a close eye on this. Uh, we also do have a severe thunderstorm warning that has been issued for Colbert and Franklin County. Again, this is a live view of our Decatur camera right now. Very hard to make out what's even going on, but if you are in the Decatur area, if you are in the um, um, Greenbrier area, Mooresville area, please, please, please get in your safe place at this time. Yeah, again, significant lightning, and that's indicative whenever, you know, we talk about severe weather, it's the continuous lightning you get concerned with uh, with these storms. If there's any good news, the circulation doesn't look as tight here. Uh, we're still dealing with some strong gusty winds here near Lindsay Lane, north of Highway 72 there in the city of Athens. Uh, but this storm, we just continue to watch it because I think it may be going off and on the boundary, but still very large hail and put the lightning back on here, put the lightning counter. So in the last 10 to 15 minutes, 113 lightning strikes within this storm. And as we get in closer, uh, what we see is this bounded weak echo region, we call it. Uh, what's going on is the wind is coming in very strong uh, right here on Highway 31 and just to the west of Pryor Field. And this is gonna, our camera is located right here uh, off Wilson. And it, it really, if you live in South Decatur, it's just windy. There's a lot of lightning. The tornado threat is now moving right over Wheeler Lake, and it's up near the Swan Creek uh, Mobile Home Park. The velocity will continue to show some intense wind here. But uh, let's, I want to take a look at the debris signature, see if we've got any debris showing up with this storm. And as of right now, we don't. Uh, I'm going to loop that just to see in case we, maybe, maybe we missed something. Uh, but this is going to go back about 30 minutes. Uh, some strong indications, maybe some leaves off of trees, things like that being blown up there, but I don't see uh, any confirmed tornado right now, but that doesn't mean there hasn't been one, and it doesn't mean there won't be one, uh, because this storm, again, it's on a boundary, and I think it kind of goes north of that boundary, a little south of that boundary. I'm going to update the storm track here just as soon as I uh, get through doing this uh, street level in here. So we got Mooresville Road here. South of Highway 72, this is moving almost due east towards County Line Road. We've got Seegers Road, Powell Road. Again, this is large hail right now, just uh, north of Old Highway 20. So this is just north of the Mazda Toyota plant with the large hail. Uh, Weather Service have any reports yet of large hail? Uh, no reports, Brad, but I will say they're going to go ahead and go with a severe thunderstorm warning with the northern flank of that. Um, okay line there in Madison, Limestone County. This one up here, this probably for a severe yes. thunderstorm. Yeah, well, that's going to happen. So Harvest mm -hmm. Monrovia, the weather radio is going to go off again. It's probably going to go off in the entire county here of Limestone and Madison County. Uh, this right here, the circulation kind of gets blocked by the really big storm to your south, but still a potential for some damaging winds there. Circulation kind of coming back uh, with the storm as it's getting ready to cross I-65. Uh, so if you're listening to us on our simulcast partner, Mix 96.9, or maybe even WKAC 1080 AM Athens uh, broadcasting us this evening, it says you get south, I would just stop on at, at the Athens. If you're driving south, stop at the Athens exit there, but you can get probably as far south as 240, I believe it's uh, 347 there. I believe that's the Bucky's exit there. And then as far as northbound, uh, the Tennessee River Bridge in north is where the biggest concern is. So you get to that Tennessee River Bridge, 
I would slow down, and especially 565, you're getting close to it, uh, the danger zone there. Uh, again, this is moving right down Old Highway 20 uh, towards Greenbrier and Moores Mill. The circulation kind of tightens up, and then it goes away and tightens up, so nothing is really kind of locked in as far as uh, the tornado signature goes. I do want to check the debris one more time real quick, and uh, again, we're getting kind of contaminated here. Here's the sheer track and this is kind of important to watch and you kind of see how we go from the red to the green into the red so it's kind of skipping along and I think it's because it's probably getting off that boundary just a little bit there as well so overall we've got a severe thunderstorm warning just issued that does include parts of southern Lincoln County a new severe thunderstorm by the way warning issued out here in Russellville and we'll get out there in just a minute but the most pressing issue right now is this tornado warning and this storm that's producing a possible tornado or could produce a tornado at any minute moving into Greenbrier. And what we're seeing here. And Brad, I do want to interrupt real quick because that bet. severe thunderstorm warning that they have issued downstream, or not downstream, but just to the north, um, that is going to be for lime, limestone in Madison counties. They have a tornado possible, possible. tag on this. Okay, that just means there's a little bit of that circulation yes, we saw yes, on this, Lindsay Lane. Yes, so they still are watching that area very closely. As far as the severe thunderstorm warning that's off well to our west, this is going to be for uh, Colbert, also Franklin County. Not seeing any rotation with this storm. Doesn't mean the winds are not there. The wind's not necessarily circulating, um, but still some damaging wind threat and also some hail with this as well. I, I, if I had to guess, I would say penny, maybe dime size hail with this. I'm not seeing that necessarily quarter sized hail, but I still would seek a sturdy shelter um, because these damaging wind gusts possibly are gusting up to maybe even uh, 65 miles per hour if I just had to put a guesstimate on it, Brad. Okay, and that's the, the storm in uh, northern parts of Madison County, right? Yes. Because I think we're closer to quarter, maybe golf ball size here yes. uh, in and around Greenbrier. And what I was circling uh, was that area of circulation uh, that may be trying to form. Again, this is uh, just to the east. And we're going to get a report. Weather Service is probably monitoring the prior field observation here. If you're in Tanner, uh, still, I would still be seeking shelter here uh, for about five or ten more minutes. But the circulation is about to cross Highway 31. And we'll go back on the velocity. You see it has. It's right now crossing I-65 and moving towards Greenbrier and Powell Road. Uh, but what we're seeing on radar, we continue to see uh, strong gusty winds and the possibility a tornado could develop uh, within this storm. We still don't have any confirmation as far as a tornado debris signature. That's the latest update there. But we do have a rotating thunderstorm that's capable of producing a tornado. So we're definitely concerned with that. And as we turn the lightning back on, we continue to see significant lightning developing as this moves uh, pretty much along County Line Road in Madison near Palmer Park and out towards the Huntsville International Airport. So eventually this is going to track pretty much right along I-565 for a little bit, and then maybe it's going to make its way into uh, downtown Huntsville, it looks like. So let's put another storm track on this area. Again, I'm going to track the back edge that's on I-65 right now and move it almost due east. So here's the track, and eventually down the road, if it holds together, there's still a chance that the atmosphere is going to stabilize here over into Jackson County, but that's just a heads up. It's moving into Madison at 10.04. It's, you've got 15 minutes now before it starts moving into Madison, but probably on the west side of Madison, uh, we're talking uh, 10 minutes or so. So 9.55 Greenbrier, it's pretty much there right now. The lightning is out ahead of what I'm tracking and the lightning is already picking up in the city of Madison. Marshall Space Flight Center, 10.08. The Grissom High School area, again, another point of reference here in Huntsville at 10.17. Uh, downtown Huntsville at 1019 and then Gurley around 1036. Again, we're tracking a storm, a significant storm producing hail and damaging wind potential is there and at times showing signs that it could produce a tornado. We don't have any confirmation of a tornado, but I'm sure there are a lot of eyes on this as it's in a heavily populated area. Again, moving through uh, area well populated here, a lot of businesses out here in the industrial park here as we see it moving towards it's moving through Polaris, that area right now, and it's also threatening the Mazda Toyota plant on the west side of Madison.
Clements, and this is going to roll right over James Clements, the high school. Uh, I say roll over. The storm itself is with the significant lightning uh, going on. We don't have a tornado signature as of right now, but this could spawn off a tornado at any minute. It's just, it's just violently producing lightning out there, and that continues to slowly approach the Huntsville metro area coming in along 565. Uh, let's briefly talk about this storm up here. There is more circulation developing as you get up here south of Ardmore. This is going to be uh, just to the west of Love Branch Road and also along Alabama Highway 251 uh, near Bain Road. Again, you're not under the tornado warning along Thatch Road, but this is a severe thunderstorm warning. We've got high winds possibly looking at damaging straight line winds up here with that storm so something we'll continue to monitor uh, and as we get back down here towards Greenbrier uh, the storm itself I think it keeps going on and off of this boundary as it moves to the east from Greenbrier to Madison I don't see tight circulation I don't see right now I'm kind of it doesn't look like it did when we first went in, uh, broke into programming. It doesn't show the classic uh, hook echo on the back edge. So perhaps it's get, as it gets east of I-65, the instability is not as strong there. And we've seen this happen before where storms just collapse as they run out and uh, run off the boundary and they run away. Uh, from that instability uh, and see we're not we're no longer seeing that so I think it's probably off the boundary so what I'm talking about is there is a boundary of instability and it basically is following this area here and occasionally this thunderstorm gets off the boundary so once it's on the boundary it starts rotating and then the lightning goes way up because the updraft really intensifies but as it gets off of the boundary I think over time the circulation weakens a bit, and then we don't have as much lightning. So we're going to monitor that. I do want to briefly come out here and check on these storms moving towards Russellville. These are potent storms. If we're picking them up all the way from Jackson County, we're likely looking at significant wind here uh, within these storms. So let's go back over here. A new severe thunderstorm warning down into, wow, that one's got to be watched too. As you get west of Hackleburg, we've got this little circulate, this little notch here. Again, this is just blown up here, and there's other storms with notches back to the west of Fulton. So I'm going to get in here towards Russellville, significant lightning in Red Bay, and let's take a look at the velocity data. Very strong winds here. In fact, it shows up better here on storm relative velocity. Probably seeing wind damage, may have already had that in Red Bay, intense lightning in Vina, and there is circulation developing. In fact, there may be a tornado developing out here. Again, this is just down to the south, south of... Uh, south of Franklin County. This is down in the Marion County. Uh, it kind of confused me here with the shape of the polygon. There, there's the tornado warning. So tornado warning down here. Uh, if you're in Hackleburg, you need to be seeking shelter for this. Hodges, we're going to have to keep an eye on it right here on the southern edge. Vina, intense wind coming in. So this is a significant thunderstorm here with widespread uh, straight Brad, line winds. What and I, got, I think we just got a tornado warning on that area. Yeah, yeah. I just saw that right yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. They just put the tornado warning. We noticed that little hook there that's developed on the edge and it kind of verifies here uh, with with the radar data and this could be one of those brief spin-up type tornadoes here but if you're in Russellville just get ready a lot of wind coming in I know you had some wind with the last storm that came through this has a lot of wind and a lot of lightning and we're talking winds probably 60 miles per hour as this moves off to the east and let's take a look at the radar for the rainfall out here in the shoals I think your severe weather threats probably uh, tamed down quite a bit. And I think as we go through the rest of the night, you'll see that shift to the east a bit. And down the road, we're going to have to watch uh, southeastern Franklin County uh, through the Bankhead National Forest south of Moulton for this line of storms here that's tracking to the east. I think it's gained a lot of momentum. And this has really just raced across uh, the state of Mississippi, at least northern Mississippi. That continues to move east pretty much right along Highway 24 towards Moulton. I'm going to put a storm track, and then I'm going to get back to the Huntsville metro area for you folks. Uh, but again, no confirmation of a tornado right now. But here is this track here of this significant severe thunderstorm 
I'm going to put it moving at about 52 miles per hour. Uh, so Cherokee, another storm, the uh, worst of this is going to stay to your south in Cherokee, but you're probably going to see strong gusty winds on the back edge of this. So Hodges, 1005, Crooked Oak, and right now, if, if you lost power, you may be watching this on our phone or through streaming apps. It, it is, it's now a, a 956, so we're talking Crooked Oak, 1006. <laughs> The Hackleburg, Russellville area around 1011, 1013. Littleville, uh, 1014. You need to be staying away from your windows with this storm as it moves through. Sheffield, 1016. Muscle Shoals, 1018. Again, you're on the northern edge of this, so I don't think the wind will be as intense, but we will have to watch to see if anything kind of spins up like a bookend vortex, something like that, as it moves on the northern side. And Coxie, again, on the map, you already have a storm in progress there. This will be another one coming in. Brad, so once again, I will Hackleburg, say... Hackleburg, 1013. Let's go to Chelsea. What you got? I will say that little notch that we've been watching uh, down in Marion County. They're about to issue a new tornado warning. That is for Franklin County. Um, again, this little notch that we're watching, it That's is like just, hole. yeah, it is just south of Vina, um, but it is getting closer and closer to Hodges. <clears throat> Brad mentioned that we really needed to watch this and boom, we do have it. We do now have a new tornado warning. This is for Franklin County until 1030. Again, this severe thunderstorm warning is capable of producing a tornado. It was located just northwest of Weston or uh, northwest of Hamilton. So we're going to keep a close eye on this as it continues to track to the northeast. It could be impacting places like Hodges. So if you do live in that area, uh, again, this is going to be in portions of Franklin County. Make sure you go ahead and get it in your safe place. And we're going to keep tracking this out. Brad is about to put a storm track on this. And again, we keep watching that little notch. I will say uh, the notch looked a little bit better just uh, two minutes ago. It has weakened just a bit, but these storms, they have spun up and then spun back down because like Brad's been mentioning, they're riding along that boundary of an instability. All right, let's, we're going to get back to Huntsville. Just a quick look at the storm track. Phil Campbell, 1018, Leeton around 1026. Haleyville, 1031, Town Creek, 1033. That's for this entire line coming through. Keep in mind, within that line, it's possible we could see tornadoes. So again, here's the latest uh, tornado warning here. I do want to show you that. Vina be seeking shelter. Also, Hodges seek shelter. We've got real circulations going all along this line. And usually what that means is we get brief spin-up tornadoes and winds that are approaching 70 miles per hour. So storm fully capable of doing damage here as it moves towards Phil Campbell, uh, Rockwood should stay south of Russellville, but Russellville, you'll have your own problems, your handful uh, with that storm there moving in from the west. I can hear the thunder outside the studio. And just as I mentioned that, take a look at the storm here moving towards Tanner. This is what we call a bow echo. Uh, this is Boeing here. There's no severe thunderstorm warning for that. But what's happening is the wind energy is coming straight in. It's being funneled in, kind of like uh, when you're in a breezeway and the wind all picks up or between buildings. So we're watching Tanner now for that. I'm going to check the velocity with this as well. Uh, we're probably going to see strong gusty winds. I'm switching over the radar to high top. And it's this area here near Tanner that the wind's going to be accelerating here. So. Be careful out there. Here's the latest on our tornado worn storm moving into Madison. Very heavy rain, lightning, but there's not as much lightning. There's probably half as much lightning uh, that we saw earlier when the warning was initially issued. Uh, the worst of the weather is now probably, I say worst of the weather, there's a lot to choose from here. The larger hail probably down some in the city of Madison, but we're probably looking at dime, maybe nickel size hail with that. And if you take a look at the velocity, I'm going to turn the lightning off. It's still fairly disorganized, but even a disorganized mesocyclone can do damage. And you can also have uh, what we had in Albertville several years ago. It's called a non-descending tornado. The mesocyclone actually just sat on the ground and did damage. So there's always that possibility we have to look at. So circulations we're monitoring here, uh, moving into Madison County, out here towards Harvest in Monrovia. We're probably looking at winds maybe 60 miles per hour. There's not a lot of circulation with that. But the circulation concern, the possible tornado, is in this mess here, mm -hmm. uh, roughly on the south side of Madison. It's going to be south of the Liberty Middle School area. It's going to stay south of Highway 72, a Balch Road area, the Huntsville Hospital area. So it's south of those areas. It's pretty much moving a Mill Road, 
down towards Palmer Park and to the east. It is going to impact the Bridge Street Town Center area and also the northern part here towards Gate 9 of Redstone Arsenal, moving almost due east. This is going to stay on the south side here. Uh, Alabama A&M, you're kind of between warnings here from Meridianville to Huntsville. I think you're mainly looking at high winds if you live in that area. So let's get in closer and we'll talk a little bit more about the communities really affected here. It's roughly from Marshall Space Flight Center north and as you get just to the south of Highway 72 and this is all moving east and it'll cross Memorial Parkway here in about 15 to 20 minutes. And as far as the TV station goes here, uh, we're located right about here. I think we're okay. This is going to be Oakwood, Oakwood Road here. And again, we're watching the area. It's moving east, northeast. We don't have any telltale signs that there's actually a tornado on the ground right now. I'm trying to look at the debris signature. It's still a little bit muddy, so to speak, there. So go from 3D back to the home view here. And what we're seeing here, again, when we, it kind of looks like Pepto-Bismol. It's kind of a mess. That's why we don't show it too much unless we're really concerned about high winds coming in. As we take a look at this uh, velocity view here, we have strong gusty winds. This is why the severe thunderstorm warning has been issued up here as you go across the state line. This is south of Fayetteville. I know your, your weather radios probably went off for the severe thunderstorm warning, but what we're tracking are areas of strong gusty winds coming in from the west. And of course the lightning is probably picking up here as well. We'll turn the lightning back on. And Brad, I will say uh, you were looking at our CC, or we call it our correlation coefficient to see those tornado debris signatures. There was a really well-defined tornado debris signature with that tornado warn storm in Marion County. Okay. Again, and we do have a, it's still in Marion County, but it is moving north-northeast. That's why we have a tornado warning there uh, in portions of Franklin County. Again, mm. we're continuing to watch this storm. Uh, when we get that tornado debris signature, essentially that shows us that objects are being lofted up tens of thousands of feet in the air. Of course, uh, Brad can show you that at the wall, but we are closely, closely monitoring the one in Marion County, also the one that is tracking into portions of uh, the Huntsville metro area. Yeah, okay, we go back out here and we're gonna show you this debris signature. This is pretty much what we're looking for. As you get down to Hodges, starting to see some of that down here. Again, it's this little blue area. Let's see what that looks like co uh, correlated with the velocity data. And then we're gonna loop that as well. So that's a little bit behind there, but what you were talking about was down into Marion County. So as we take a look, and this is probably what's left of it, uh, this area in yellow. So I'm going to zoom this out and we're going to put that into motion uh, here. And you'll probably see what uh, Chelsea was mentioning. It's probably going to pop up right about there. There it is. Yeah. So I would say we've got a radar confirmed tornado that has moved through northern Marion County, in fact, put, stop that. It's probably here near Reed Road uh, because here's the tornado signature in its current state, but earlier near Reed Road, it was a lot stronger. So we've had a, tr a tornado track was on the ground for probably four or five miles, maybe six miles. It may still be on the ground. Uh, so again, this is down here in northern Marion County. So let me stretch this out. If you're in Hodges, you need to be seeking shelter because we're starting to see some of that show up here and maybe some of that's debris that's actually been lofted and is, is traveling in the wind farther to the north. So since we've had a tornado touchdown and the winds are out of the southwest, you could see debris falling there in Hodges as we go back to the velocity and it's that same area coming in from the southwest. So again, concern there with a possible tornado and again, this storm, let's loop that because it's showing some consistency here. It's moving to the east, and it's almost moving a bit southeast. So I think one of those circulations may have fallen apart. But again, thanks for pointing that out, Chelsea. Again, these are just along this. Yeah, you can clearly see the tornado threat here. I'm going to let this loop one more time. And this is a classic tornado that develops right there had what I call a donut hole, and that's where the radar data wraps all the way around, and there's a hole in the radar data, and you'll see that briefly right there. And uh, we're still concerned south of Hodges, so let me put a storm track on this. 
zoom out just a little bit for you folks down there in Phil Cameron. Again, we're covering a lot of territory here. Let me know if you see anything out of that Huntsville storm. Any reports, Chelsea? Will do. Uh, 24 mile an hour is not going to do it, but that'll. I'm going to zoom out even more here. So let's go down the road just a little bit more for this storm here. Moving it, I'm going to put it about 46 miles an hour. So Phil Campbell, I don't know if it's going to be a direct impact right now, or I don't know if this is going to hold together. But I'm telling you, if it does, it's that threat's going to be there around 10:16. That's 10 minutes from now. So 10 minute heads up. I do know I'm concerned for Hodges and Hackleburg. So Hackleburg, you need to be seeking shelter uh, for a storm that does have a history of producing a tornado. So we're no longer in the point of we think there might be. There has been one, and it, has, it was on the ground for probably six miles, and we're still getting a little bit of blue here showing up. And actually, I think it's the area back here toward in yellow, southwest of Hodges, uh, that is the tornado debris signature still showing up. So velocity still fairly high there. As far as what's going on, uh, the rest of the area here moving into Russellville, uh, lightning's going to pick up in Russellville, a very heavy rain. So there's 135 lightning strikes. We'll, we'll just average it out to the last. 12 minutes or so and the storm just southwest of Hodges shows the highest uh, chance of seeing a tornado because we've already had a tornado there it was on the ground for at least five minutes so as we kind of come back here to the Huntsville metro area just very heavy rain right now uh, velocity I think the storm's falling apart a bit I don't see the well-defined and and if this was producing a tornado we would we would know it because it's in a heavily populated area. We're getting lightning more concentrated in a smaller area here as this moves into downtown Huntsville. A lot more lightning. Again, I mentioned that storm near Tanner. That's moving towards Harvest, Monrovia, Capshaw, right down and just north of Highway 72. Uh, we're going to get in closer in just a second with that. But let's get in closer here into the Huntsville metro area. This is moving uh, pretty much over the the uh, Marshall Space Flight Center, east of the Huntsville International Airport, and then it's down Zert Road, basically, as you get over here, Patton Road, Zert Road. Uh, this is going to be just to the south of Toyota Field, off of 565. If you're in Madison, I think uh, the higher wind threat is south of Mill Road right now. I don't see an imminent tornado right here, and if you're up towards 72, I think you're okay, but we're still watching the lightning uh, from the storm coming in from the west so this storm looks a lot better i think it's running into more stable air pardon me just still watching this storm west of hazel green there's not much lightning with it but it does show some weak rotation in the mid-level so that's just kind of maintaining what we have going on with that storm uh, still concern here on highway 72 so again, before I do any more zooming, I'm just gonna reset the view here and kind of summarize what's going on. Right now, we have two areas of severe weather we're monitoring. The most intense weather right now is farther south. It's farther south, Russellville, down just to the north of Hamilton, and it's in that area because there's more instability for that to work with. Now these storms will continue to move to the east, so we're concerned down the road if the trend continues for uh, areas Moulton, Hartzell, south of Decatur near Priceville, and then the other area is on a boundary that has momentum built up and that's moving through the Huntsville metro area. Now, mainly on the east side of Madison. However, having said that, this other storm moving into Capshaw, pretty much right down Highway 72, is starting to intensify. It's producing more lightning. So we're going to take a closer look here at this storm, and we're going to get street level. And this area on the north side just... It, it, it's got some rotation. It's, it's weak, though. There's not a lot of lightning, but maybe some isolated damaging wind there. Shear rate... It's not all that impressive. Let's go storm relative velocity and back to velocity. So we got that severe thunderstorm warning for northern Madison and southern Lincoln County. Uh, that's until 1015. So I'm going to turn that off. And then the area kind of in between is uh, moving down Highway 72, east of Athens, east of Lindsay Lane there. So. We're going to look at this Boeing segment that's on the back side of this and really doesn't show it very well there, but it's there. It's on the north side of Highway 72. You see that area coming in? 
And this area, let me stop that. Turn the lightning off too, because that lightning is it's just so much lightning, it covers up the data. So what we're watching here is this bow in the line here, and there's probably isolated damaging winds uh, moving into East Limestone there. That's gonna be out. And East Limestone as you get just west of Capshaw. Tornado warning will expire at 10.15, so we've got four more minutes on the tornado warning and about roughly four more minutes on the severe thunderstorm warning. So again, that area of strong gusty winds is out here towards Proline off, uh, uh, off of Capshaw Road. So let's get in here a little bit closer. Uh, just east of Mooresville Road, down Nick Davis Road, north of Capshaw, down Pepper Road. This is gonna track right through uh, Nick Davis Road and continue to move east. What we're looking at is strong gusty winds, perhaps an isolated severe wind gust uh, with that area there. More heavy rain. This is becoming a real serious rain threat overnight tonight too. As more rain continues to fall, we're probably gonna start getting some flash flood warnings uh, before too long. I'm going to focus back here to the west again. Tornado warning is set to expire in three minutes. Have they said anything about continuing anything? E yes, Brad. So they are going to continue that tornado warning again. It's now for, uh, excuse me, my phone sending off alerts as well. Uh, that is for yeah. Jackson, so Limestone, well. and Madison County until 1045. So again, another 30 minutes. Um, they're going to extend that warning. Um, again, despite the circulation broadening or that rotation that we look for, we want to continue to track this because it's in a very favorable environment. It keeps riding along that boundary of instability. And we saw that storm over in portions of Marion and Franklin County where we had that confirmed tornado, that tornado debris signature. And essentially, it takes one little notch for it to spin up, and it didn't last that long, but that's what we're watching for with this Madison County storm. Again, that new tornado warning has been reissued. This includes Madison County, Limestone County, also portions of Jackson County as it continues to move to the east. This is until 1045. Right now, we are not noticing any strong rotation, but that could change in an instant. So make sure if you are under a tornado warning, this this means the red polygon. You should be getting a loud alert on your phone. You just heard all of our alerts going off in here. Make sure you stay in your safe place. Do not get out of your safe place until that tornado warning expires. We also have severe thunderstorm warnings ongoing. Make sure you are in a sturdy structure for those. Not only are we tracking a tornado threat, but we have a lot of damaging wind threats. We're talking wind gusts as high as 65, 70 miles per hour. A 70 mile per hour wind gust, essentially that's a tropical storm, a low end uh, speed there. So make sure you are in a sturdy shelter. I, I'm reading all of the comments and a lot of people are saying, uh, I'm in this place, is it okay for me to move yet? Yeah. It's not okay for you to move yet unless uh, that you are not in that polygon. So we want to make that very, very clear. Make sure you are staying in your safe place. Again, that uh, tornado warning has been reissued for Madison County, Limestone County, also Jackson County until 1045 this evening. And of course, if it holds all together, we're going to continue to track this into portions of our northeastern counties. We still do have a very favorable environment. This includes... Um, a good amount of instability that these storms are still riding on and essentially uh, they're getting fuel from. Um, of course, no confirmed tornado with this just yet. That confirmed tornado was in Marion County, um, but we will be sure and let you know we, we use all of our products. Uh, right now, this is our velocity product and this is a good way to get the wind speeds also to see if the winds are circulating. That circulation, as I mentioned earlier, still relatively broad. Um, we do have some broad, um, I wouldn't even call it circulation, but I definitely would call it some gusty winds. Um, in northern Madison County, again, this is uh, moving uh, to the east, I would say, about uh, 50 miles per hour or so. Hazel Green, Meridianville, also New Market. If uh, you get in on this, um, it's likely going to be a big burst of powerful winds. Again, main story, main focus at this time is our current tornado warned storm. This includes Madison County, also portions of Limestone County, in Jackson County. And that severe thunderstorm warning um, for uh, Limestone County the, in Madison County, the northern part, that has just been expired, but I'm still expecting some gusty winds to move through that area um, as far as uh, some heavy rainfall as well. 
And of course, we're going to take you to our storm relative velocity too. Um, this shows some of that circulation a little bit better. Still very broad at this time. We're not noticing anything wrap up by any means, but like I mentioned earlier, it can wrap up in the matter of seconds. So that's why we want to keep a close eye on these things. Um, and we're just going to go to our shear rate here. This is a good indicator to see if uh, we're, we're seeing any of this uh, pick up right now. Um, Right now it's on the weaker end, but again, do not let your guard down. If you are under the tornado warning, you need to be in your safe spot right now. Back to you, Brad. All right. Hey, thanks, Chelsea. Changed out my batteries and uh, got some water. We're good to go. Again, follow those instructions Chelsea just gave you. Uh, we continue to watch the storm moving through the Huntsville metro area uh, that continues to kind of go back and forth on the possibility of a tornado. But I will tell you, uh, the last few scans we continue to watch, but there's just really nothing here at all. So again, take your tornado precautions, but I'm telling you, I do not see a tornado with this storm in Huntsville. I don't see a developing tornado either right now uh, with the radar data we're looking at right now, and this is the 1016, so this is the latest update. It's really uh, getting contaminated in here with a lot, of, a lot of this stuff going on, but I noticed that they actually have the tornado warning beginning here near I-65, which would be for different reasons out here to the west, and uh, I'm really, I don't see a tornado here. I'm going to be honest with you right now. I see a lot of lightning. We're getting power outages. And most likely the power outages are from lightning strikes. A lot of those, uh, Lindsay Lane area out here where we have significant lightning along Highway 72. So I do not see any significant imminent threat for a tornado anywhere within the tornado worn storm. Storm relative velocity, this is completely off the boundary. In fact, what I'm seeing is the higher winds are actually out here just to the north of Hazel Green. So we, don't, we no longer have the supercell structure to this. So I gotta be honest, I'm a little confused to why they continued the tornado warning because there's nothing really to support that right now, at least right now. But again, that comes to play where it, as it gets on and off of that boundary, strong gusty winds near Bridgeport moving along Highway uh, uh, Interstate 565. Uh, but overall, it's not a tight circulation. We're really close to the radar. Uh, so with that, we would see it especially the way that storm looked earlier. So it is clearly uh, half the storm it was, but again, the tornado warning continues here. Uh, they've extended it in the back into Madison too, tracking east, northeast. So very heavy rain and a lot of lightning. We're gonna go back out here to the west. We'll keep that storm in view though, and we'll switch back over uh, to uh, the GWX radar, take a look at velocity there radar there <clears throat> and I do want to briefly go back down here towards Phil Campbell again you should stay in your tornado shelter here in Phil Campbell as there's still a possibility we've got a tornado this storm is uh, much stronger than the one in the Huntsville metro area as well and we switch over to the velocity and again this is not really showing a strong tornado signature but this could change briefly as well so stay in your shelter there uh, east of Hodges now south of Rockwood and on towards Phil Campbell Russellville you are under a severe thunderstorm warning. And as we look from afar, we, we don't see, like usually if you'd look even from this far on a significant supercell storm, you'd see really big, what we call storm top divergence from this storm over the Huntsville metro area. And as we get in closer, again, this is gonna go over Green Mountain, and that's another player here. As it goes up in elevation, the entire storm is forced to rise up. And on the other side, that's where you can get uh, the vorticity there increasing on the other side of the mountain so we'll watch that area as well so as we get in closer street level here into the city of Huntsville now crossing the parkway lightning picking up a bit so it's going to be these areas here we watch as I put this uh, down again I think the possible circulations along the parkway just south of there as we turn the velocity back on and that's where the strongest inflow into the storm is but once again there's there's no need to panic right now if you're in your shelter maybe your heart rate's picking up the lightning's picking up maybe the power's kind of flickering on and off again which is probably due to the lightning in the area I don't see an imminent Violent tornado, definitely I don't see that. And I, right now I don't even see a strong tornado indication, but you could have some of those lower end type tornadoes. As this is forced to rise 
over Green Mountain. So that circulation area pretty much south of Drake Avenue, along Whitesburg Drive, Martin Road, as you enter towards Marshall Space Flight Center here on the east side, and this continues down. So as this moves east, we will have to watch to see as it goes through Jones Valley, of course, uh, that's an area to the east of the mountainous areas, and then it's going to climb again as it goes here north of Big Cove and over towards Gurley. So not a whole lot of lightning associated with this. There, there, is a lot of, there is a lot of lightning for just a thunderstorm, but it's not the continuous uh, strobe lightning that we had earlier when the storm was moving into Decatur. So as we go back to the radar, again, this is unorganized, but it could be reforming as it's on just north of the boundary now. And again, what we're watching, the main concern here is right along the parkway, into uh, downtown Huntsville, Clinton Avenue, Drake Avenue, off to the east. And even though they've got the tornado warning over here for East Limestone, I just see a lot of lightning there and some strong gusty winds. Uh, the storm will continue to move east-northeast. So as this, again, a lot of times we see with the history of these storms as they come through, the wind can change and funnel just a bit as it rides uh, uh, the higher terrain here, as it gets into the valley, and then changes happen down the road with the terrain. So this is, if, if we do get a tornado here, it's totally going to be terrain-driven here uh, with this storm as it's forced to rise. And then on the other side, because the atmosphere basically has a limit, like the ceiling in your house. So the bottom of that storm is forced to go up and over, and once it gets to the other side, it goes down. So that's when you can spin up a tornado here as it moves across uh, Montesano and Green Mountain. So let's get back in here into Huntsville, uh, right along Drake Avenue. I'm gonna turn the loop off again, uh, but it's the area along Drake Avenue, Velocity. Uh, still some strong gusty winds here. And if this storm is doing damage, our uh, scanner is going to be going crazy out in the newsroom. And so far, I haven't heard any reports of that. We don't have any reports of any damage. Do we have anything from the Weather Service at all? Not one report, Brad. And this storm has been report. going on for an hour, and we don't have one damage report from it. Okay, let's go to Margo. What do you, I don't know. So I've been monitoring comments and I've been monitoring those damage reports. Good evening, everybody. So what I have at this point is significant power outages across the Tennessee Valley. So let's start with the worst at this point. So that you'll find in Lauderdale County where 1,600 homes, customers, are without power at this hour. Athens, when you were talking about that damage, Brad, Athens has some damage. This is like a fence down, a tree down, um, sporadic. Highway 72 around Lucas Ferry in the Vestavia Estates uh, subdivision right there. So that's the damage that I've gotten so far. But if you all see any damage out there, you help us tell the story better than anybody. Videos, pictures, send it on in to us. But at this point, power outages and significant lightning um, reports. That's what uh, I'm seeing on the comments. Folks are commenting about the most, the amount of lightning that they're seeing. Um, and so also Decatur has another set of um, significant power outages, 1,300 people out there. So that's what I'm seeing so far, Brad. Um, I'll keep monitoring things for you. Okay, now as we speak, they have trimmed back the tornado warning. Madison, you're no longer in it. So again, I was kind of wondering why they had issued it so far west because there was absolutely nothing going on there. And it's clear that if there's any threat here, it's now crossing Green Mountain and Montesano and headed into Jones Valley towards Hampton Cove, north of Owens Crossroads. You can see Big Cove on here. Uh, Grissom High School area, Lily Flag. Your winds are going to increase quite a a bit there maybe maybe 45 to 50 miles per hour but this is the time we're going to have to watch this closely as it moves towards Ryland, Maysville and Gurley down the road and that circulation is near Dug Hill Road now and Montesano Boulevard so it is going up the mountain we're going to see what happens when it gets to the other side because as I mentioned earlier that vortex is going to have to uh, drop a bit. So sometimes that can change things. But I've seen uh, I've seen several storms that, that, that are really mean in Decatur, and they cross 565, and then they get into a uh, less favorable environment and then fall apart some. And uh, not saying this one's this isn't completely falling apart, but the tornado circulation that it had uh, in Decatur, it, it's not that at all. So I just want to make sure maybe that con will 
give you some sense of calm here as the storm moves in. The lightning picking up in Maysville off Highway 72, and again, the, the thunder's going to kind of roll through the mountainous areas here as this moves into Jackson County as well. And overall, I think the instability will be even lower over here into Jackson County. But still very heavy rain out Highway 53 towards Harvest, Monrovia up to Meridianville, Hazel Green, New Market, very heavy rain there. Madison, it seems like it's not going to stop raining because there's more rain coming in from the west. I do want to update uh, the radar out here to the west as we take a look at a significant lightning in and around Phil Campbell. Let's get in here and see what this storm is doing. This is going to move to the east, just south of Moulton. Uh, a lot more lightning concentrating. That's the key here when you're looking at severe weather is that concentration of lightning going on. I'm going to switch to the velocity here and in around Phil Campbell. That storm is passing you, so here in about 10 minutes, I think you're going to be all clear here in Phil Campbell and in Hackleburg. We don't really have uh, that tight circulation there uh, with that storm. And again, no, no debris signature there. Uh, but however, we get it towards Hackleburg. Let's, uh, I think that's out ahead of it though. <clears throat> but it still could be some, here was the debris signature earlier. And there may be a little bit of debris along the leading edge of the line here. Uh, probably just tree limbs and things like that, uh, just because the wind is so strong uh, across these areas. And that's tracking almost east, southeast into the Grayson area, Double Springs, and down here is uh, closer to Smith Lake. So overall, this line of storm, I think this is the line of storms we have been watching on the forecast guidance that's eventually going to continue to track to the east and mainly pose some isolated damaging wind and maybe an embedded tornado risk there. But what we've seen, I mean, the model guidance is probably underestimating the rainfall, and that could be a real big issue overnight tonight and for the morning commute with very heavy rain. And we see that with these big convective systems that come through, and uh, we're probably seeing that tonight. So some areas could pick up two to three inches of rain. Brad, and I will say tonight. on that note, as far as damage reports, we haven't necessarily gotten uh, some uh, hail or wind damage reports, but those flash flooding reports are starting to come in, especially across the northwest Alabama, because they have been getting dumped and dumped and dumped with rain. Rain's still coming, and it will be lingering into tomorrow morning. Flash flooding right now in Colbert County. This is at Old Highway 20 and Justice Drive. Reports of three to four inches of water over roadways and under several mobile homes in the area. So I do not recommend, even if you're not in a tornado warning right now, I do not recommend getting out and about. These are going to be treacherous conditions to drive in right now and likely in the early morning hours while it is uh, still raining. Also, we are getting reports as well um, of NOAA weather radios not functioning properly. This is going to be for DeKalb County when the tornado watch was issued. Um, if your NOAA weather radio is not functioning properly, please download our WAFF 48 weather app. You will get alerts. This is a great way to get those watches and warnings as we continue through the rest of the evening. Uh, don't be alarmed. You, your NOAA weather radio or whatever device you use to get watches or warnings probably will be going off a lot tonight, especially for uh, flood, flash flood watches and warnings, things of that nature. Because again, that this threat is going to be trending towards that later as we head into tomorrow morning. But again, uh, that uh, tornado warnings uh, stormed, excuse me, in Franklin County that has been allowed to expire. Of course, we will continue to watch trends. We still do have that tornado warning storm for portions of Madison County into Jackson County right now. Circulation almost uh, non-existent. I would say it's very, very broad. We still are tracking some gusty winds though. Also a lot of lightning with this that we want to keep a close eye on because uh, lightning is a good indicator that the storm is gaining strength. And again, a lot of these storms have been riding along that boundary of the most favorable conditions where all that instability is for these storms to really get juice and fire up. Um, nothing uh, um, again, no confirmed tornado as of right now for the Madison County area or Jackson County, but we're going to continue to watch this closely. Again, that tornado warning is all the way until 1045, so another 15 minutes before everyone can get out of their safe place if this warning is not extended downstream. Brad? No, I just going through some of my messages here coming in. Sometimes this is the only way to do it. I uh, just got a picture from the New Bethel area in Colbert County. 
Uh, looks like a fire probably started by a lightning strike there. Uh, fire department is on the scene. Again, that's in Colbert County. That came in uh, about nine, nine minutes ago, actually at, at 10.09. Uh, overall, uh, seeing just a lot of uh, lightning reports and a uh, little bit of debris here. Um, again, probably some tree limbs there in the city of Athens. So we haven't had any structural damage except for maybe the lightning report there. And uh, again, we'll hope to continue with this as we see this off to the northeast, the Maysville area. Now, that circulation center, I think it's, it's weak, but it's still there moving towards Maysville and right towards the Paint Rock Valley. So I'm gonna put my phone down and I'm gonna track this storm for you. Uh, overall, uh, so far, just very heavy rain, and I'm sure we're getting more street flooding. And it all begins where we had the heaviest rain earlier. And we're likely going to see more heavy rain and flash flooding. So again, tune in tomorrow morning at 4.30. Meteorologist Eric Burke and the rest of our morning news team will have the latest on any flooding impacts uh, that happen during the overnight hours. We will not be having severe weather tomorrow morning. We will eventually be rain-cooled, and it will just be heavy rain. But I think a secondary round of heavy rain will come in after 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. So let's get over here towards Maysville. I'm going to stop the loop here. Again, the storm is now just to the east of the mountain, so it's down in the valley here. So let's see if the velocity has changed, and it hasn't changed at all. So overall, we're looking at strong gusty winds from northeast of Hazel. Man, look at that there. Oop, that just popped up. So again, we may get a tornado warning for this storm here based on velocity. This is uh, northeast of Hazel Green, uh, again, we're just south of the state line. Let me put that into motion. Uh, this could be what we call a book in vortex. Let's see what the loop does. If it take, yep, we may have a tornado right here. So take tornado, there's no tornado warning. Uh, take tornado precautions up here. This is Buddy Williamson Road, Manly Road. May have a spin up tornado right there, book in vortex. This is pretty much a classic here as we go west of the Plevna area. Again, this is northwest of Newmarket, just to the northeast of Hazel Green. What you just saw there, these happened very quickly. You've got this. A bow echo here, and on the northern edge of it, this is called a bookend vortex. They happen very quickly, so I think we may have a tornado that is touching down here. This is uh, just south of Lincoln Road as you get up into Lincoln. Uh, this is the state line. This is east of Hazel Green. Let me get to the mileage here. Uh, this is off of Butler Road, on the northern side of Butler Road. Uh, once again, let me grab the ruler. This is going to be northeast of Hazel Green, about three and a half miles, four miles or so. Possible tornado spin up here that we're seeing on the radar data just south of the state line. And where is it going? Let's put a storm track on here. Again, sometimes these don't live very long, uh, but this is a classic bookend vortex spin up here moving northeast, and I'm probably gonna change the times here. So Huntland, you wanna be on the lookout for this, probably around 10.50 or so to 11 o'clock. And we're gonna back this up uh, with the, uh, the velocity once again, and there you see it, plain as day. That's a tornado signature for a bookend vortex tornado. As you get west of Plevna, we'll see what the latest update will show. The shear rate probably doesn't even show it. There it is. So, Brad, that's and I it. think um, National Weather Service in Huntsville, they issued a severe thunderstorm warning, I believe, for that, but they have a tornado possible. There's no warning up there for this at all. So right now there's no warning at all for this storm northeast of Hazel Green, and we've got a classic signature here of a bookend vortex. So you need to be seeking shelter for a brief touchdown here, perhaps uh, west of Mid Spring Road. It's still there. Here's the latest velocity. Let's get that up. Yeah, so we're still watching this. Again, this is near Buddy Williamson Road, tracking to the east-northeast. I'll get back to the radar here. I'm going to put that into motion, and you're going to actually see the northern half of this storm, the wind funnel in, and then the back edge, the rotation. This is classic here. Again, there's still no warning out for it. There probably will be soon with the velocity the way it looks right now. So here's a look at that velocity. Then all of a sudden, the spin up. They put a severe thunderstorm warning out for it yes, uh, right now. Again, there it is. It's possible we may have had a tornado. Let's take the debris signature here. It was very quick here, and it still has signs of some rotation. So let's go back here. There it is. Does it have a 
TDS, yeah, that's a tornado that's debris. That's a tornado debris signature. So I think we've had a tornado touchdown here. That's it. Buddy Williamson Road, possible tornado, maybe confirmed. We'll see if this turns blue, but it, it's, it's, I think this is a, a debris signature. Uh, what we're seeing here, uh, this is along Buddy Williamson Road. Let's get in street level here. Uh, you get down Boyles Road, it's east of there. And this is Boyles Road and Walnut Grove Road. A debris signature showing up on the radar where we were looking at a developing tornado in a comma head, a bounded, I mean, bookend vortex is what we call it. Shear rate continues to be high in this area as well. There still may be a tornado on the ground. Again, this is why we try to look as everywhere as much as possible uh, for possible tornadoes. So this is going to continue to track. Let's see the track here. This may be moving a little bit more east than northeast, but that the severe thunderstorm warning they put out has this moving northeast. Yeah, there's the tornado warning. So again, we gave you, what, 10-minute heads up on that? A tornado is likely on the ground with this storm uh, right now, moving just to the north of Plevna. It's on Buddy Williamson Road. And even this area here of Madison County, this is a heavy, becoming more and more populated as the hazel green expands. So be in your shelter. It's likely we've got a tornado on the ground because the tornado debris signature uh, basically tells us that. That in the radar, that was a classic uh, comma head tornado that, that's probably still on the ground there. Yeah, there it, the circulation's actually tightening up. So this is actually just went away. So again, spin up. Uh, but overall, I think we've had a tornado there. With the latest update, let's see if the debris signature has changed. It's starting to go away. So I think we may have just had a five minute tornado in northeastern Madison County. This is gonna track along Limestone Road and eventually could impact uh, Huntland. And we don't have any signatures showing up here in the Huntsville metro area. Again, this is blue. That's just all kind of trash, so to speak. We're losing the red here. So, again, that's just how quick those things happen. I'm really glad. Hopefully, we could uh, pass that along. But I think we probably have damage out here. Let me zoom back in and show you the area. Uh, it's going to be near Butler Road, Buddy Williamson Road, in around Manley Road. And with the data kind of coming off here, you can kind of see uh, with this, let me, actually, I want to show the debris signature here again. Actually, get off of that. Brad, and we are getting comments about damage in New Market. Damage no in New Market? Okay. Yes. Yeah, and the New Market's kind of spread out as well. Did you, did you say you have pictures of that as well? No pictures as of right now, but I'll keep a close eye to see if we get any damage Okay, pictures. I'm going to go back to the sheer rate. And I'm going to turn that off, and we're going to get here, and we're going to look at what was basically in the path of that as you get west of Buddy Williamson Road. So again, uh, put it back to the home area here, get our bearings again. Severe thunderstorm warning still continue out west. We'll get there. I just want to kind of see uh, where we may have had damage here northeast of Hazel Green. Again, this was about three, three miles. I'm just going to give that up. It's not going to let me do that. But again, the Buddy Williamson Road area, uh, going to monitor that for possible damage. And the storm is probably moving. It's moving away now. Uh, so overall, I think the tornado threat is going to go down, but there's still probably some damaging wind gusts. We'll get another storm track up there in just a second. I want to update you here. The tornado warning has been dropped now for Madison County, but they have extended the severe thunderstorm warning into Jackson County. Just some high winds, so that sort of circulation for the tornado went away about the time it moved into Madison about 30 minutes ago. I'm quickly going to go out here and update you in Moulton and Russellville. Again, a lot going on when you're tracking uh, changing weather conditions. We're going to switch the radar source over here, and you can see just starting to become a very heavy rain and gusty wind event. It is rain-cooled across the northwest corner of the state. I don't think you're going to see any more severe thunderstorms. You're probably going to see more lightning up here in Florence. And let me kind of draw this out for you. I know some of you are probably trying to think about going to bed here. But, man, if your phone is like our phones in here and you got that tornado warning, I think that will wake you up in the middle of the night. But, again, multiple sources for weather warnings, especially here in Alabama where we get severe thunderstorms. Seems like every other day now, uh, but can get them at night, in the middle of the night, and that's when you really want that alert. So you get uh, west of this, northwest of this white line, and I think we're quickly becoming just rain-cooled and a heavy rain event. 
We are going to continue to watch this storm down here uh, south of Russellville as it's on that boundary, kind of like the storm as it moved into Cater was. So this is just on the southern fringes of the viewing area, moving into the Bankhead National Forest. Mm -hmm. And uh, storm reports out of here, it's going to be tough, especially with all this lightning power outages may go out, internet may go out, uh, maybe cell phone range is a little bit... Uh, LTE, things like that, a little bit hard to come by. But area, Phil Campbell, I think you're okay. you got more heavy rain coming in from the west. Russellville, still more heavy rain. Flooding is probably going to be your biggest concern uh, for the rest of the night. Let's take a look at this storm relative velocity. And it's the southern part of this storm that concerns me the most. Uh, it's east-southeast of Phil Campbell. Some gusty winds still in Phil Campbell. The lightning's still very intense. But a lot of this lightning is starting to move away from you in Phil Campbell. So concern down here in Haleyville. Some of you may be watching our broadcast down there. And again, when, when we're on social media and we're on our apps, you can get us anywhere, anywhere across the country. And some of the people are asking, how do you watch on Roku or, or how do you watch on uh, the Apple TV or the Fire Stick? We actually have an app and you download the app, and it shows up in a little square, just like everything else. Say so you got HBO Max or anything like that, Paramount. It'll show up, WFF 48 News and Weather. And when we're streaming, you'll be able to get us there as well. So, again, multiple ways to get warnings, multiple ways to watch uh, programming here. You can also find our newscasts there and replays as well and additional information. So just thought I'd pass that along in case you lose power and you're trying to figure out how you're going to get our broadcast. And, by the way, if you haven't rescanned your digital um, off-air antenna, we've increased the power of our antenna so it now stretches uh, across much of the viewing area now, especially up in the middle Tennessee where we had difficulty in previous years. So having said that, let's get on into the thunderstorms that continue uh, to cause issues with a lot of lightning and the potential for damaging winds down here, but this is more of a severe thunderstorm, straight line wind in uh, event down here, but we'll have to watch the southern edge as this goes closer to Grayson let me put a storm track on this because I know that's probably what you're, you're wondering there in southern Morgan County. And I was over in Eva the other day reading to the elementary school, and this storm's going to be close to Eva. I'll put this at about 50 miles per hour in case the, the storm accelerates a bit because at some point in time, I think the momentum's going to build up more as this moves east-southeast. So Hartzell around uh, 1118, and currently it is 1042. Falkville, 1121. Eva, 1134. And this storm could intensify a little bit more because there's still quite a bit of wind shear. So we're still watching this for a tornado threat down the road. I don't think it's a tornado threat now. It's more of a straight line wind threat there. And then on towards Arab, perhaps, I would say that'll be around midnight. Hopefully, it'll kind of have the same fate here as the Huntsville storm and as it moves out of the more unstable air. Let's check back in up here for our viewers up in southern middle Tennessee. If you're uh, north of Newmarket, uh, this storm here is uh, continuing to move northeast and away from you. As we switch over to the radar, take a look at the velocity, and it's, it's, it's really lost that whole uh, – that's how quick it happens. That's why I didn't stay up here because uh, it was gone in about – uh, over 10 minute time, we went from tornado development to tornado and then tornado gone. Brian, if I Go ahead. A lot of the folks, I don't know if you can do a quick rundown on who you can clear at this point, because a lot of folks are saying, can I go to bed? You know, the typical question that we get, is there anybody on the map that we can clear at this point yeah, that I are in the... Florence, I think I think you're all clear over in Florence. Have they started dropping the watch for anybody? I know they're probably they being the weather service probably pretty busy. They're working on communicating that, but no nobody okay. dropping the watch right now. No watch drop yet. So again, I think we're mainly looking at heavy rain as the instability has moved away from the shoals. But uh, we've got some issues with too much rain over there. This tornado warning continues in the Huntland area until 11 o'clock, so that's 15 more minutes. They may expire that early because, as I mentioned earlier, this was a spin-up tornado, and usually on that bookend vortex, it, they don't last too long, but I think we had at least some tree damage. Hopefully that was the extent of it uh, with that storm as it moved off to the northeast. And here's the latest image from there. Uh, still not, well, there's a little bit of circulation, but it's far into the, into the warning here. It's... Yeah, I'll never show it to you here. If you're west of Hunt, this is south of Highway. I keep having problems with the pencil. It's uh, just south of Highway 64, but the lightning's kind of removed up here to the north. 
So overall, I, it's all clear here in northern Madison County for any possible tornado that's gone. But I can't rule out a, a weak, brief spin-up tornado with this. Let's put that into motion. You'll be able to see this develop right there. And then what's left of it is across the state line. I'm going to let that go again, and some of you can see that as well. So northeast of Hazel Green, tornado on the ground, mm, probably five miles maybe, and moving northeast towards Huntland where it's starting to weaken a bit. But going to have to watch that. Again, that's that high wind shear. Given the right environment, brief, quick spin up. Uh, spin up. Uh, this is towards Elora right now, but shear rate pretty low. So this kind of tells the story here as we take a look at the shear rate product. This is really good for just focusing in on, hey, where's the tornado? So we'll put that into motion, and you'll see this develop northeast of Hazel Green. Turn red. There it is. Three scans, roughly 10 minutes or less, and now it's pretty much very weak. Still could see some isolated damaging wind here uh, with this up here to the north. But uh, we've got this on. Let's take a look. Still just gusty winds moving into the Gurley through the Paint Rock Valley. Sometimes these get channeled as you go through the Paint Rock Valley. As we switch over to uh, the next rat over here in Mississippi, very heavy rain back into Cortland. And, you know, Margo, you wanted me to start clearing everybody. And the, the problem is when you start clearing people and you say, hey, it's this is why you need to know a weather radio. You need a way to get weather warnings when you're in the, in the middle of the night because there's never any amount of complete certainty sometimes until you know the watch gets canceled out. But I will tell you, the environment is less likely to produce severe weather. Eh, grabbing the pencil. Someone's going to send me a pencil in the mail. <laughs> Here's what's going to get from Pulaski to Florence and back here. This is becoming rain-cooled in a hurry and they did cancel the, did they cancel the watch in mississippi that was um they're, expired. they're starting to drop counties currently in arkansas but um no, n they have must not, have reissued another watch in yeah, mississippi then yeah no communication based on the watch in mississippi i will say you know as far as we're talking about clearing counties and things of that nature no the rain is still going to be a big issue we're actually getting some uh reports right now from some emergency managers that people are currently trapped in vehicles due to flooding. This is going to be at the intersection of University Drive and Amphitheater Drive. Again, I don't recommend getting out at all in your vehicle, even if you're not under a current severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning. We all are all still under a tornado watch. Uh, just because you're not under a warning doesn't mean there's not a hazard out there. This is going to become a big rain event. I know people have been saying, you know, we know it's going to rain a lot, but we're talking possibly two to three inches of rainfall rates an hour. Again, we do have a confirmation that people are trapped in their vehicles because there's so much water on the road. So just because you're not under a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning especially, please do not get out and about tonight. Um, I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of issues with the early morning commute tomorrow. We've been saying that over and over and over and over. But again, this is starting to trend more into a flash flood and flooding threat altogether. You might hear your NOAA weather radios going off right now. Most of those are going to be for flash flood warnings, aerial flood warnings, aerial flood watch, things of that nature. Don't let it alarm you. Of course, we can't completely clear everybody at the moment. Um, Brad will let you know whenever we are going to clear areas, but mainly our northwest areas right now, those are the areas that we can say, hey, it's starting to look more like a rain event, but pretty soon here, all of this is just going to be heavy pounding rain as we head into tomorrow morning. So please, again, just stay at home. I do not recommend getting out and about in your vehicle, even if you are not under a tornado threat. Uh, very well said there, Chelsea. Uh, where was the flooding? Was that in Huntsville? or? Yes, uh, the intersection of University Drive and Amphitheater Drive. I believe that's off uh, Research Park Boulevard, I want to say. Okay, yeah, that sounds about right. Again, uh, there, there are other situations you need to think about. And then another flooding report, Woodmont Drive and Tremont Drive in Tuscumbia, two to three inches of water over a roadway. And again, we've been getting those reports from northwest Alabama, um, all this evening, but they're starting to come in for the Madison County area, even including the Huntsville area, Brad. Yeah, I had to take a sip of water there. Um, one other thing to consider is there's so much construction 
in some areas, especially in the Huntsville metro area, that the water is going to channel a little different around some of those construction sites. It may be forced in other places. Some drains could get clogged, things like that. With some of these, the wind uh, blowing around, some of those construction fences can get moved and blocked. So, again, just because your area doesn't flood, normally... Uh, just be mindful, especially if you've got to get out late tonight or early tomorrow morning because uh, some areas that normally don't flood. Uh, for instance, the last severe weather event we had, I-65 was shut down there in Coleman because the water channeled onto the interstate. People had to take the off-ramp to get off and then get back on. So it wasn't a, a huge deal as far as the interstate goes. But places that you don't normally think flood, well, they could flood out there tonight, especially given the amount of rain we've had so far this month. Well, it's actually March coming in like a lion. We mentioned that. Let's take a look at Molten here. Severe thunderstorm warning continues. And we're going to switch to the velocity here. The lightning's picking up. But really what we'll watch for, first we kind of zero in on where the lightning's the most intense because that's where we're likely having the strongest updraft and most likely the area of concern. So turn that lightning off. That's the lightning, 111 lightning strikes. And boy, at night, in the middle of the night, when you're under a severe thunderstorm warning, that lightning is even more intense. Uh, but we don't have a tornado right now with this. We've got strong gusty winds, storm relative velocity down here. As you see, the severe thunderstorm warning expires at 11 o'clock, so in nine minutes. And I've got a feeling this will probably be continued farther to the east, uh, just the way this line looks. Uh, what we'll look along the line here, we'll look for those little notches that develop along that boundary. And over all. And again, we'll have to watch for that. Let's put this into motion. Have to watch for that uh, book in Vortex, right? Uh, I've talked about it several times in the past, and whenever you see it, it's very well pronounced, and it shows up. So we've got wind coming in on the backside of this storm, but also notice the boundary. That, as these storms, they produce that downdraft, and you can see it here in the radar imagery, Strong winds coming in from the south, and this is just feeding the heavy rain, unfortunately, moving up towards Cherokee and west of Tuscumbia. So more heavy rain, and that's the thing, is these boundaries. The rain's falling straight down, and it's going straight north, and the atmosphere's so juicy out there tonight, so much humidity in it, that this is triggering new thunderstorms on the north side of the boundary, which are producing heavy rain. Uh, let's see about the lightning uh, with those. Uh, a little bit of lightning going on, too. Margo, do you got something? Yeah, I just got off the phone with Don Webster, with okay. Hemsey, who just told me that, Chelsea, you were correct. They are responding to a car submerged. This is in the Mid-City Development off of University Drive. And then also there's a car submerged on Washington Street. This is downtown. Paramedics are having to respond. So that flash flood warning, heed that. Chelsea just told you, get off the road if you can. This rain is not ending anytime soon, and we don't want you trapped in it. This is now becoming a rain situation. I know, Brad, you're still monitoring a lot of that wind as well. But, you know, we need you to stay safe. Uh, there are also those power outages that I keep telling you about. Power is going out all over the place because this rain is just so heavy um, and lightning is causing an issue as well. So just monitoring things as they come in, water submerging cars at this point. Yeah, I mean, and you don't expect, you can't see it at night either, especially uh, what happens is uh, the lights on your car, the light gets scattered out and you don't always see. And then, especially out in the country, you got those low water bridges. They're not low water bridges anymore. They might be covered up. Uh, so uh, be very careful of that. If you cannot see where you, if the, do not turn, turn around, around, don't, don't drown. drown. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because you don't know how long that water has been across the road. Flood waters are muddy. You don't know if the road's there. Most of the time, the water is collecting where you have this culvert or you have a pipe that goes under the road. And when the water is raging, it washes that pipe first, all the dirt around the pipe, and then the road washes out. And then it's just brown across, but you can't tell that at night. But again, that's another reason. You, you need to turn around. No matter how important you think it is to get to where you want to go, if it's covered with water, you don't want anything to do with that. Uh, so overall... That's becoming a bigger threat here as we go through the overnight hours. And thank you for getting that report from Don Webster, Margo. Again, a couple of water rescues going on. Uh, probably cars that have just gone in. And you mentioned some of those areas, and uh, we've got a lot of construction uh, in those areas as well. So, again, something to consider uh, with new development in the area. And, again, the more concrete you have, the more that water is going to flow faster. 
and it's going to channel into other areas. So that is also can be the case on some of these other tributaries, these streams, Mill Creek, for, for example. That can rise rapidly and you also have that along the Paint Rock River and then uh, the Flint River and that comes later that'll probably come overnight tonight so let's get back here speaking of uh, Flint and Paint Rock let's go over towards Brownsboro 